Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lenny and in this video I would like to discuss something very important, very, very vulnerable. I will be very open about the fact that I am a 33 year old woman and I have lost direction in life. I really don't know what to do. At this point I'm trying to figure out how to cope with it and I'll try to make this video as short as possible but please bear with me it will be long I will be stuttering a lot especially because I'm not a native English speaker and I will try to give tips and keep it as neutral as possible and let's get started just a bit of a background story so that you know what I'm coming from I was born and raised in Russia back in the 1990s after the Soviet Union collapsed. So Soviet Union and Russia are two different countries. And my parents had to survive the 1990s, which were economically and politically terrible times for them. And my parents were in their 20s. And a lot of people at that time were struggling to survive and make ends meet. There were a lot of suicides happening. People lost all of their money, which was worth buying a whole new apartment, house, a car, you name it. And they've been saving it for decades in Soviet Union. And all of it turned into a dust overnight and wasn't relevant and worth anything. People were literally unaliving themselves. And whoever still had the means, they tried to escape the country, they ran to Europe. There was another surge, I think the third wave of like Russian, like Jewish immigrants coming to the United States. A lot of things were happening and it was a constant struggle for my parents and they had to raise two children me and then they had my younger brother like five years later so I was born in 1990 my brother was born in 1995 and on top of that the relationship between my parents was highly toxic very typical dysfunctional family of Russia my family was um, abusive towards both of us like my father was an abusive alcoholic physically abusive it was bad my parents are still together but you know it's just out of the habit and they did not know any better they didn't see any better examples um, combine all of this with a generational trauma of Russian and Soviet people of our grandparents great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents generations surviving two world wars revolutions hunger Stalin's repressions rebuilding and like Brezhnev era, whatever you get what I'm like going with it. As a kid, as an oldest child in my family, I was put such high expectations on my little shoulders and my parents were expecting me to excel at school, be the best student in everything. And anytime I misbehave and fail an exam, they would emotionally and physically abuse me, unfortunately. I mean, I was a kid, like, I understand their grievances, but at the same time, when you're raising a child, you have to realize that you can't expect them to be so good if you yourself was not a good student. Like, both of my parents, they were not the best at school. They didn't have a college degree or well, university degree, and they really wanted me and my brother to have it. But the difference between being raised as a girl and a boy in Russia is vast like they raise girls in Russia especially my generation as boys but at the same time they expect us to be feminine to wanna marry and have kids immediately also to have a job and everything it's a lot and that's why I ended up having a perfectionist syndrome and a lot of fears put into me and me being a creative person from the get-go uh because i was not like most kids i'm not saying that i was better but no like i definitely have some talents i'm pretty creative i used to draw a lot as a child and i used to be a very like quiet kid and i mean i would interact with other kids but i usually would end up having just one close friend and once their friendship fizzles down like i would move to another one yeah like it was a lot and when i was a teenager i so Britney Spears performing, I think it was on TV or maybe like a videotape if you remember the VHS. My ex-classmate gave it to me, she was a fan of Britney Spears and this is when I was 13 years old, I had an idea that oh I want to become famous, probably that's my dream, I want to become a pop star. Mind you, I never learned any music, my parents never really cared about that and um, when I voiced my dream to my parents, they were completely against it they were so harsh on me that I basically became scared and 
I didn't know who to rely on and you have to have realistic expectations you need to find a better job like something stable blah 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 so instead of pursuing my dream and I was a very like fearful kid because you know abuse and all of that like I had to enter whatever the university my parents could afford like they could not afford anything they were super broke because they were trying to survive like struggling and because the relationship was not positive and cooperative like my father would not really care he was emotionally unavailable too for both me and my brother and finances were a huge thing like in, in my family in my household and basically I had to enter whatever the university I could enter without payment and in Russia we have state universities which are free if as a high school graduate you graduated from primary school with all straight A or A B grades if you have at least one C your parents will have to pay out of their pockets so I ended up entering the Department of Philology back home and my second major was English because ever since I was at the fifth grade at school I started learning English that's why I speak it pretty well and I was really obsessed and because I wanted to become worldwide famous I became obsessed with America and at the age of 21 it was my fourth year at the university back in 2012 I ended up finding an agency who helped to you know handle all the visa work all the paperwork and I came to America and ever since I stepped my foot on this land I never went back to Russia and I was not able to see my parents physically for almost 12 years and it's been tough guys it's been really tough the reason why I decided to stay in the US because given all the situation and a lot of hardships and I was not really happy at that university because I just went there so that my parents can get out of the way because gap year is non-existent in Russia there is no such culture and parents of my parents generation like they're so scared that their kid instead of going straight to the university right after they graduate from high school that they get a job and start making money that they will not want to have a college degree that they basically force their children to have a degree but <laughs> as life showed me no higher education will actually be a guarantee for a prosperous job and prosperous future to you unfortunately especially when you're an immigrant in, a, in another country but I chose to stay here because I liked it here and till the last moment I lived with my parents and of course they're very they were very controlling especially because I was a girl they were super worried and at the same time they had this interesting weird situation when like they would not let me go clubbing when I was a teenager because they were so afraid of me getting as a but at the same time like as soon as I turned 18 19 my mom was like why aren't you dating anyone why boys are not asking you out well because they want to party and you wouldn't let me and all of that stuff that's why I was enjoying myself in America I mean not for the first two months because I had a work contract in Ohio don't ask me it, it, it's, it's it's another story and I decided to come to New York and I love New York it's the energy that I, I craved for because I like to walk everywhere I love big city energy and I ended up having a relationship there and for seven years out of 11 and a half of my life in the US I lived in New York but I messed up with you know a few things with money and I've been trying to switch my visas and everything it was a lot and I was not able to get my parents a visa like my mom tried to apply for it but her request got declined because I was already in the system and that's what they do <laughs> it was bad and I was struggling to get a job in the United States and this is how I ended up landing a lash artist job I had to learn a new skill because I had no college education I had no money and I still have no money to enter the college in the United States because it's effing expensive a lot of you guys Americans are struggling to pay off your student loans because it's so much money and I think that's why I feel like I was actually blessed to be from Russia because you still have state universities and you still can study for free you don't need like a scholarship per se yeah my adult life basically started in the United States and I don't regret staying in this country but I do regret not thinking ahead of time because it was just like a last-minute decision I was about to fly out back to Russia but I decided to stay because I was like I was not happy with the kind of United States I experienced because Midwest is except for Chicago maybe I've never been there yet 
like Midwest as a whole thing was something which America did not advertise at all because the way America advertises itself it's all glitz and glamour Hollywood Broadway Manhattan Miami maybe and all of that it's so overly glorifying the facade but behind it there is so much I'm not gonna say crap but like darkness I still love United States don't get me wrong but I definitely am now at this point of my life questioning of staying in this country because for the last few years for the last five years when my life started taking really bad turns and ups and downs things got worse especially in the last three years for the entire world because of the pandemic COVID-19 lockdown now we have two wars ukraine russia palestine israel it, it's a lot it's a lot happening i've have been having this internal conflict of i want to move back to russia but at the same time like i don't want to leave the u.s and i don't want to stay here because like i said my adult life started in the united states and this is a trauma only immigrants could understand especially the first generation that i will not be able to fit into the russian society because my mindset has shifted and at the same time, I cannot fit into the, the American society because I'm an immigrant. Because I was born and raised in another country and English is my third language. And I still manage to speak it pretty well. Let's be real here. It's hard to make friends with American people because of the mindset differences, the cultural differences. I'm not saying Americans are bad people. No, there are a lot of good people. I met wonderful clients thanks to my last job and I've been doing lashes ever since I learn how to do it it took me a while and starting 2015 i count it as my professional experience so it's it's going to be nine years this spring i guess well 10 if you count the first year of me you know trying and making mistakes and all that because nobody taught me i had to get the hang of the skill myself and then i took two master classes two workshops and improved it as i started making more money and you know back then my Russian ex was supporting me I had a six year long relationship but it didn't work out because he could not give me what I had to have and I also couldn't give him what he wanted to have we were disagreeing in a few points a few things which were crucial and that's why I basically had to call it quits I got burned out in New York completely that city wiped me out and at some point of my life like I had a really nice moment when I was making lots of money with lashes the business was booming I had so many clients and but I was blowing my money because I grew up in a deficit society like buying a new dress was a huge deal for me for my family and of course once I finally started making actual money like three four thousand dollars a month that was like such a huge deal for me and I was self-employed I was my own boss of course I started going to all these beauty procedures because I love looking pretty you can tell <laughs> I put a lot of effort into this outfit and yeah like I was just blowing that money to some clothing because I was deprived from it for most of my life in Russia. I mean, my parents definitely did manage to buy me some clothes because you had to dress up and all that. But I was basically overcompensating and also I felt very lonely. And the fact that my mom could not get a visa was so frustrating for me. I don't remember, I'm not sure if I cried, I think I didn't, but I just felt empty. And I, I was like hoping and looking forward to see her so bad, but it didn't work. And getting a visa for them right now you have to fly either to Kazakhstan Turkey or Arab Emirates it's an extra expense it's super expensive right now because recession inflation post-covid like all of that is just having such a huge impact very negative one so basically at the end of it like back in 2018 I got completely burned out I broke up with my ex that year I messed up my business I instead of just taking like a few weeks break I just said that I don't want to do this job anymore I canceled it and of course I lost all of my clients it took me almost a year to recover them and within that moment I was briefly dating a young American guy and the relationship ended up really badly thank God I met him thank God we're not together anymore and February 2019 fast forward I decided that I want to move down to South Florida because I was fascinated by it I wanted some warm climate I was tired of winters and I wanted to have a change so fast forward October 2019 I moved down here with $600 in my pocket second time again the first time it was $600 in my pocket to New York but I was younger I was more enthusiastic and lucky 
But second time was more stressful. I didn't know anyone and it took me a lot of time because I didn't want to do lashes. I thought I was going to meet someone, marry him and my problems will be solved. Never happened. I'm still single. Dating in Miami is hard, but whatever. And then pandemic hit, lockdown hit. And I was at the very rock bottom back then. I mean, I'm in a better situation right now, but I'm fairly close to what was back in 2020. Fast forward a year later, I mean, I was able to get back to my lash business because I realized that that's the best I can do because I was like still deciding what do I want to do, what I'm good at. Like, I like to do creative stuff, but I like to try this and that and my mind is pretty scattered. It was a very depressing time. I mean, 2021, I was doing pretty decent. I had to get through like a waitress job in a hookah lounge because I need to make my ends meet because I was at like negative $7,000. Now I am at negative $11,000 because of my teeth. But two years later, like last year was terrible financially for me and I was hoping to get married by the end of last year, but I'm still single because I try and try and date. I meet nice, some nice guys from, you know, dating apps, but it just doesn't click. And anytime I try to lower my dating standards, it doesn't work. It brings me nothing but frustration. That's why I decided to step out of that game, ground myself. And I'll be very honest, last year I even had suicidal <coughs> thoughts, but I also realized that Yes, I'm 33 year old. I'm a loser. Like I'm a complete loser, but I'm still fairly young. And I think that just unaliving yourself is going to be such a waste because why then did I have to put up with so much crap just to end it like this without realizing my dreams, without seeing my mom, hugging her. Thank God there is a technology. I mean, we video chat every now and then and like we send each other like photos, audio messages and stuff, but it, it's not the same, you know, like it's not the same as to feel her physical presence here. She's the only closest pers person to me in this world. Like my father and my brother aren't that much, but they're still my family. And I had an insight last year that I will be and I am the only person who can save myself from it. No one wants you when you are at your most negative and your most lowest. And I just decided to accept the fact that, okay, Lini, you're the only person who can save yourself. And instead of beating myself up constantly and focusing on the negative, try to focus on the positive. It is super hard and our brain is naturally wired to focus on the negative because this is a survival mechanism of our ancestors. And our task as humans nowadays is to try to break that pattern, which is super hard because if you've been lear like learning and leaning on one certain path of negativity, it's hard to break it and build one overnight. You know how it works. Now I'm going to give you the tips of how I cope with it and trying not to be too depressed, even though it's super hard. And First thing, like I said, because I'm a creative person and at some point I just stopped drawing, I stopped journaling or everything because I was so down like many times, I decided to go back to something that I really loved doing as a kid. I started drawing again and these are my two drawings that you see. This is the first time I ever tried oil painting. I decided to start very small. This is still drying. I mean, I hope you can see it. I hope it's going to dry soon. And also this is acrylic. <laughs> Basically the, what's that? She Cosmos, that's how I called it. I used to be a huge fan of anime of Sailor Moon, so I took inspiration from there. <laughs> I try to, you know, dress up more often, try some new makeup on, like today I decided to play with some colors. I usually don't wear much makeup because my eyes are very sensitive and they start itching, but I decided to play around with it. I even started making new clothes. I mean, I used to hate doing that when I was at school because we had the subject of domestic chores and the sewing classes. But this top and the skirt, I'll try to attach the picture. I made it myself, it's the first time ever. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's still cute. Also, I made this skirt, like this one. I'm just trying to find ways to be creative because this is what helps me to immerse myself and to kind of shut down that negative voice in me, the whining and the whiling, which is always there, that, no that noise, which is so bad. 
also long time favorite taking walks with favorite music in my earphones you know whatever you like i love k-pop right now watching some funny shows netflix you know sometimes listening to podcasts or let's say if we, i want to take a walk just to listen to surroundings i can do that in silence it definitely helps to decompress also looking at the surroundings I, I live in a fairly cute area there are restaurants here just like to pass by is nice window shopping uh, I love art galleries and there are a lot of free art galleries sometimes I'll just drop by to look at the paintings and some nice art it's very inspiring it makes me smile and recently I was able to afford to go to Van Gogh experience the immersive art which was beautiful and I don't regret paying money for it. Also, I noticed that right now I live with lots of roommates that, you know, sometimes when you share food with someone that you make, it also makes you feel good because if you're like, oh, it tastes nice, I appreciate it. And I hate cooking, but because I'm on a budget right now, I try and start like making foods that I never really made before and like enjoy the process something favorite which i use, usually would order at the restaurant i would try to make at home like kind of like a copycat of it you know just little things and also trying to be happy for the weather outside because it's warm and it's january and like i'm dressed up like like this i don't have to wear all this heavy fur coats and stuff what else listening to my guts and like trying to be in tune with my intuition getting as much sleep as possible when i'm not working even though yes i'm trying to get a job it's hard but you know it is what it is talking to my parents venting out my thoughts uh, also trying out some other hobbies like singing or anything else and also i am very grateful for the peaceful sky above my head because there are people who escape the war right now unfortunately and I'm really happy that I still have a roof over my head, nice clothes to wear, food on my table. You know, I'm just trying to learn to be happy at the moment. It's one of the hardest lessons, but when you try to focus on that, it actually helps. Uh, yeah, and also what helps a lot as well is listening to other people's stories because when you think that your life is crushing down like it's just crumbling <laughs> and shattering to pieces sometimes listening to some other person's struggles will help to realize that your life isn't that bad at all it's not as bad as it seems to you it may sound a little bit incorrect but it is true because it's funny how i'm an immigrant yes i have like my certain issues here as a person who's very lonely who's struggling to find a nice decent partner and i don't want to marry just for papers i mean you can get a green card by marrying someone but i don't want to do it just in the name of that i genuinely want to like the person i'm with because i want to have a family and i hope that my story helped you to realize that life isn't that bad and i hope that you maybe learn something maybe took some useful tips and thanks to anyone who watches it and yeah hopefully see you soon <laughs> bye guys